Recently, I was invited back to the video tech class I took at my alma mater, Whitmer High School, to talk to the class about my experiences and what I've done since I've graduated from high school and what the film industry has to offer. I encourage you to mostly listen to this. It's kind of long, but listen to the talk I did, like a podcast while you're on your way into work or while you're doing dishes or whatever. And let me know if there's anything that you see that I can improve on. But yeah, uh, Whitmer, thank you so much for having me back, and I would be more than happy to come back and uh, do another talk. Okay, hey, this is Zach Koloff, a 2012 Whoa. Whitmer graduate. You'll see his photo up here with his hat backwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was not the best choice. <laughs> Wait, let me see our news. Hall of I actually never saw that. Oh, yeah, that is the one. Uh, I saw Zach at a football game, high school football game, and mm -hmm. he had... Um, uh, how wide is that drone? Um, it's about, yeah, about like that. Okay, and it was, it was lifting like a whole lot of balloons? It was, uh, field, golf balls. Event. Foam golf balls. Foam golf balls. Yeah. Yeah. How many golf balls? Um, I don't remember, but it was probably around two to three hundred, yeah. roughly. So anyway, uh, it was part of some promotional event, and so <coughs> Toledo Aerial Media. Yep, you got it was out there doing that and um, I think my brother was, no, somebody, I walked up. I, I heard I, Zach. You, <laughs> yes, right, right, right. right. Um, I walked up, recognized you because mm -hmm. my brother Kevin had said uh, that you were in local media doing something mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. And uh, then um, we touched base. Uh, you said, um, he said that uh, he could come in and, and update uh, Whitmer on what he's doing and so that's why he's here uh, to give you a sense of how his life um, has gone since he graduated from Whitmer and got into local media. Yeah. So Zach Koloff, give a round of applause. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, is there, how do we turn this back on? Oh, yeah, right. Shut up, Anna. It's on the lower right corner on the bottom. Okay, I'll let you do it. I don't want to mess it up. Make sure curb stomp you on the stage. That was oh, hey. mean. Everybody just heard that. That was a threat. And? Nobody cares. Lever <laughs> touch. <laughs> what input are we on, you know? Um, shoot, I forget. One, maybe? HDMI one. Okay. Wow. Oh, come on. Oh. Really? Yeah, don't go with Nice. Perfect. All right, hopefully that stays up. Okay, good morning, everybody. Morning. How's everyone doing? We're here. Good. We're here. We're here. You don't want to be here? <laughs> but if you're here, that means you will be where I'm about to show you that yeah, I have been. So. So. Like, so much of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, it's been crazy this morning, like walking through the halls because I graduated in 2012, which was over 10 years ago now. Uh, so it's been, it's very nostalgic to like walk through and, you know, see the school again. Um, and I, I may or may not have stuck back there while I was waiting and saw what you guys have and it's really cool. I think the, the cameras, when I was here, the, the teleprompters, I swear they were made out of wood, I think. They probably were. Yeah. yeah. So this is, you guys have a good setup here. Um, but anyways, so yeah, my name is Zach Kohlhoff. Um, I am a local filmmaker, cinematographer, photographer, drone pilot, all of the above. I never really know what to call myself because there's a videographer, cinematographer. I, 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 I play with these and these, so whatever that means to you. Um, all right, let's get this full. Um, I have this slide. I have this um, presentation here to just kind of keep me on, on um, track here. So, education, uh, I explain what I did. Um, basically, um, well first, before I get into that, I wanna pick, can I get three people to raise their hand and I wanna know what, you, what your intentions with this class is. You? Oh. <laughs> like, why I picked this class? Yeah. Um, okay, so I picked this class because I took the intro in um, ninth grade, mm -hmm. and um, I learned that I actually like doing videography and um, editing and stuff. Yeah. And I wanted to learn more about it. Cool. 
Nice. Oh, uh, I think I saw your hand next. Um, I'm planning on pursuing the arts and stuff like that, and I think um, this really goes along with the arts. Yeah. Uh, media production, and um, I just want to further my knowledge in it. Awesome. How are you? Um, so I took the intro like she did, and mm -hmm. I just seen the whole program, and I was just fascinated by it. And also yeah. I want to do something with sports, like sports broadcasting here. Yeah. And think sports anchoring. Yeah. And I enjoyed the program, and I really liked it. Now, I saw one more question. I see you went to Specs Howard. Yes. That's where I want to go. Isn't it only like a year program? Last I checked, it was. They yeah. they were switching from nine months to a year. Um, I think when I went there, it was a year, yeah. So you only had to go there for a year. Um, so technically, I don't have a degree, and we'll get into that. Um, I have a certificate. Um, but yeah, you go, it's a year course. You go, and things may have changed. I actually am pretty sure the school I went to is now affiliated with another school. Yeah, so when I went there, you would go up there twice a week, and then you had online classes the rest of the week, but that may have changed. Now, what, what can you get with that certificate? Like, where can you go? Like, um, yeah, so um, I guess now that we're on the education side, I can talk about that a little bit. So um, when you get out of this class, you have a few different options of what you can do with this field, and there is so many options. Um, and like honestly, like graph design, podcasting, radio, it's all kind of interchanged. Um, but you have two options when you um, have a career in this field. You can either A, own your own business, which is what I did. Um, I don't currently work for my own business right now. I work for someone else. And that's the second thing you can do is work for somebody. Um, now, depending on, in, if you don't know which one you want to do, that's completely normal. Um, but, so let's say, for example, um, when, you, when you own a business, um, so when I, I kind of just, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my career. I just knew I loved making videos and films. Um, so I bought these cameras and I just started going out to the b different businesses and doing my thing. Um, but no one told me that when you do that, you're a business owner. And that is a can of worms that you either might be able to um, handle or you might not be able to handle. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of, a lot of work behind owning your own business and a lot of boring things that you may or may not want to handle. Like, it's like when I say boring things, I mean like, things dealing with taxes at the end, at the beginning of the year and legal stuff and all that. You have to deal with all of that or you have to hire someone to do all that for you. And when you hire someone, that means you, you're in charge of an employee and that is a whole nother thing too. It's a, lot, it's a big responsibility, but there are a lot of benefits that come with that. So that's what I did for a little bit. I owned, what you see up there is Zach Films. That was the business that I owned. I did wedding videos, which, um, you can make a really good living off of that. It's, it's a lot of work though. You can kind of kiss your weekends goodbye because <laughs> um, most people get married on Saturday. Um, and then I also did a, a lot of videos for nonprofits, which we'll get into later. Um, so you can own a business or like you said, you want to get into sports media. So um, BCSN is a really, is a local, I worked for them for three, about three years. I'm not a sports guy, so I didn't really last too long there, but if you're into sports, that might be a really good thing for you to look into. And they, um, I was able to, um, actually my former, the former teacher here, Mr. O'Connor, he connected me with her and I was able to job shadow. So I wasn't physically working for them, I was just kind of sitting in, watching what they were doing, and then they ended up hiring me. So you could do that. And if you work for someone else, um, that might, sometimes that's a better option for you because you get to focus on what you do best, which is maybe creating of like be on camera filming or editing or something. And then whoever you work for handles all the business stuff. Um, now if you work for somebody else, um, it's actually a, you almost have to go to school for it. Um, so that's why the Specs Howard thing is there because um, that's where I went. But um, a lot of schools or a lot of um, workplaces, you have to look at what they require. A lot of them require you to have like a four-year degree or something. 
Does anyone know why they might require that? No? OK. So um, there's a few reasons why a lot of um, workplaces re require degrees. And they're all different. Some people require degrees. Some people don't. Two reasons are, one, it means you have a lot of experience. But the main reason why they require that is they want to see that, um, that you can commit to something, that you can stick with something. So if you went to school all four years, you got good grades, they're like, yeah, this person wants this. So they're more likely to hire you. Any, any like pilots in here? Anyone getting into fixed wing pilot? <laughs> OK, well, <clears throat> if you ever do, if you ever do, the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, a pilot's license is kind of a form of that. Um, if, you, if you put on your resume that you have a pilot's license, that shows also your loyalty to things. So that's another good thing to do. Um, but I mainly, when I got into this, into this field, I mainly wanted to, like, I mainly wanted to do my own thing. But I didn't really know about all the business stuff. So I was kind of, honestly, a little bit underprepared for that. So, but that's why the YouTube icon is there. I, some of you might not be able to see that. But um, that's why the YouTube icon is there, because um, if you do, if you know you want to own your own business, you really don't have to do a lot of like media schooling. I would actually recommend you um, take a business and finance course. Um, but I learned so much off YouTube. I watched YouTube YouTubers do their thing, and I honestly watched it, and then I put it into, into action, and then um, I learned a ton, and it it, it really works. So, any questions so far? All right. Okay, so how the heck did I get into this industry? Um, I'm like, there's not many people in my family that are into media at all. Um, but I, I knew I was, I've always been creative. I, I've taken the graph design course here. I've taken woodworking. Um, I took this class, obviously. And actually, when I took this class, I thought I wanted to be like a news anchor or something. Um, but I finally found out that I wanted to be a filmmaker. Um, now, the movie Pearl, anyone ever seen the movie Pearl Harbor? Yeah. yeah. So I watched that religiously when I was little, um, mainly the attack scene. I don't know why, but like I just love the movie. I love the way it was shot. It, it made me feel a certain way. And then later on in 2007, Transformers came out. Anyone ever seen that? Yes. I see some smiles. Because my dad loves Transformers. Yeah. So, um, and that happened to be by the same director. So I saw that and I was like, oh, it's just so cool. And then, then finally in 2007, that's also when anyone ever heard of YouTube? <laughs> I figured. Um, that's when YouTube came out and I started watching YouTube videos and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can just grab my parents' camera, film something, upload it to, to this YouTube and like people might see it. Like that's so cool and all that. And I still, I still remember in, back in like 2014, I started my own YouTube channel. I felt like I started a website. I was all excited. And I was just uploading stupid videos of my friends and I playing in the neighborhood and stuff. Um, but then um, I found this guy, Devin Graham. He goes by Devin Supertramp. Anyone ever watch him? I think his popularity has kind of sunk over the years, but he got really popular years ago. <coughs> And he's the one that, watching him, um, is when I really decided, like, OK, like, I can actually do something with video and like YouTube. Um, and I made the mistake of telling my family I wanted to be a YouTuber. They, like, they got very concerned, because back when I did that, YouTube was like for cat videos and stuff. It was not a way to make a living. Uh, but fast forward to now, YouTubers make probably more money than us three combined. So um, yeah, OK. So that's how I got into the industry. And I are you saying that Michael Bay inspired you to be a filmmaker? He was a big part of it. He, um, you know about this? No. <laughs> I will say Devin Graham knows I exist. Michael Bay, probably not. <laughs> I've talked to Devin like through Patreon or whatever. and. I'm like, thanks, dude, for all you do, because it inspired me. So, but yeah, I, I love like I'm an action film guy. I love I love Michael Bay's movies. It's just something about like, have you seen um, Ambulance? 
it's I, it's an intense movie, but it just it has that same like feeling. Um, okay, so what do I do? I talked about it a little bit already, but I'm going to kind of go through and show you exactly what I do. Remember um, Mr. Mullen talking about that big drone? That's this guy right here. Um, that'll barely fit on one of your desks. Um, but yeah, we what we do is we um, we go to like golf outings and fundraisers and stuff, and people buy these balls, and we drop them over a, gr a golf green. And if they go in the hole nearby, they win a prize. So um, that's one thing we do. But um, we started Toledo Aer Aerial Media is the name of our of the business. Um, we started off as a drone company um, back really once just before drones were really getting to be popular, and then we've morphed into now we're a full production company and I've been working for TAM for about three years now um, and some different pieces of work that we do um, we work with um, this insulation company they insulate houses and we will go on installs with them and follow them around all day recording them installing foam into these houses and um, and that's a thing that companies want company like all kinds of companies they everyone needs marketing um, so there is a ton of opportunities in this field to you just pick a you know pick a business and you kind of have to encourage them to that they need video they need it but they may not know it but it's your job to um, convince them that they need video and then you make it and then they put it on social media I would say in my I think I've been in this field for like a little over 10 years I have maybe done a TV commercial maybe three times in my career. Social media is where it's at for the most part. Um, most of the stuff you'll likely make is going to end up on social media, depending on where you're going. Um, and you see that wedding couple down there. I did that is actually a part of my business, Zach Films. I did weddings for I don't know many years. Um, that's another great way to make a living is to um, film couples weddings make a cinematic video out of it um, it's it's a big thing that you can do and it 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 does it does pay the bills um, and this is really cool I can't wait to talk about this that is tractor pulling that is something I did not think I'd ever get into but um, our company that's one of our biggest projects it's a year-round project we cover the sport of tractor pulling has anyone ever heard of tractor pulling Okay, good, cool. Did you know that if you travel 30 minutes south, it's the biggest tractor pull in the world? No. Yeah, so this area, what's that? Yes. Yeah, the National Tractor Pulling Championship, it is the biggest um, tractor pull in the world. And we, I am, I am in charge of their social media, um, me and, and our team. Um, we, we market it because it's, it's bigger than Toledo Mon Hens, Walleye. It's huge, but it doesn't get marketed very much. In fact, before we got into it, it really didn't get marketed. So um, we'll get into that. So, um, so this is a series that um, our team does. It's called Behind the Hook. And it's basically a sort of like a documentary series about tractor pulling. Um, and there's some pictures down here. I'll move this side here so you can see, of us interviewing different um, pullers. You can see the tractor there. Um, let me see if I can pull up a video. Do, do, do. All right. While you're pulling that up, when is the, when is the event? I forget when it is. It's, um, it's like middle of August. Middle of August? Yeah. If you guys listen to the radio, which again, that's kind of, not common anymore either. <laughs> you'll start hearing a ton of commercials. I'm surprised. If you haven't heard of it, I'm actually really surprised. So this is a trailer for our series. This season. Oh. What the heck? What? Clever touches are awesome. See, I was telling you. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. He, he walked in and said, that, that, oh, man, this is really nice. And I was like, you don't, you don't know. Clever touches. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's teaser. No, that's what I want. I think this is what I want. Whatever you do, do it for less at Harbor Freight. I yeah, not mine. 
this season. There we go. In the hood, if, if I don't tractor pull, I'm busy doing something, working in the community, working in my business as well. Our farm is a, it's a family farm. And my family says my grandmother got married in 1919. My roots come from farming, logging, tractor pulling. That's all I've ever known my whole life. <laughs> I think there's a, a misconception as to what bullying actually is. Well, trying to bullying, I would say, is one of the most powerful forms on the earth. You're pulling a, a 40,000 pound sled behind you that is designed to stop. I feel like people kind of think, like, well, that's stupid. You kind of have to go and experience it to figure out, like, what it's all about. It's hard to think what you do horsepower expected to go to the other end without something dumb happening. Behind the Hook, Season 2, premieres December 2023. That's the date. <laughs> so yeah, um, what started off as us being asked like to come out and like maybe get a few pictures of the ticket booth to see how many people come in. It went from that to uh, we covered the whole event, which is three days. Um, and that you just saw is a series we do. Anyone watch like Hard Knocks or um, Full Swing? Yeah, Hard Knocks. So it's just like that. We basically, it's a year-long project. For, the, for Bind the Hook, last year, we traveled to Iowa, um, New York, uh, what was the other one? I'm not thinking of the other one at the moment, but we traveled there because that was the garages of the tractor pullers. And we spend a whole day with them. They show us their farm or whatever they do for a living. And we interview them about their, themselves and tractor pulling in general. And then after all that's done, um, for the three days that the tractor pulls go on, um, we have our team, we, Tudor and Media is three people, myself included. Um, for that, the event is so massive that we have a, probably a team of like 10 people that go around to the track and record all different things going on around the track. And it is exhausting. Uh, but that all gets compiled in and we do a full video of um, the whole event itself. And then we do um, three episodes about, um, about each polar. So. I never really thought I would ever be into that, but if anyone in here is, uh, anyone in here like into motorsports or like cars or whatever, okay. You guys would probably like the tractor pulls. It's the horsepower and everything, it's, it's incredible. So I would recommend checking that out. Um, so that's a big project that we do. Um, I don't know if I can switch. Actually, before we do that, maybe I'll show them a video from one of these. Sorry to make you rip it. Um, another opportunity that is out there is um, a social media influencer. You probably hear that a lot. Honestly, the word influencer now is kind of an eye roll. A lot of people are like, oh, whatever. Um, basically what it is is um, if you make enough videos on social media, you become known and people, you, you get a following. And what happens is, is companies will hire you and say, hey, we want, can you come and have this experience and record it and we will either pay you or we will just allow you to have that experience for free. Um, so I, I guess I'm considered an influencer because um, our local travel bureau will invite me out to different events and other photographers in the area and we get, to, we get previews of things that public is not allowed to view yet or, um, or I will, if my wife and I go on a trip, I'll record it and put it up and um, they will share it. So it's kind of cool. So let me pull up an example here. So this is, what I'm gonna pull up is, um, um, my wife and I had this thing where we wanted to stay, anyone ever heard of the Canali Tree Houses at Metro Parks? Yes. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah, the one that yeah. So um, I do a lot with Metro Parks, and this was kind of something I voluntarily did. My wife and I wanted to stay at all the tree houses, um, but I recorded our experience, and this is an example. I'll just show a little bit of, of it. I won't show the whole thing. <coughs> Guys, guess 
guess what? It's time for another Canadian Treehouse Metro Parks Village. I said that backwards. Stay vlog. Today, we're in this guy right here. Um, Flatwood Commons is what this is called. It's gonna be the first big treehouse to your left when you come in. And we have this nice boardwalk here. It's wheelchair accessible, ADA accessible, or it makes for great wagon pulling as Kristen's doing an amazing job of back there. It's my wife Marissa there, friend Anthony, Anthony Wright Films, and Kristen, ha, huh, all the way up here. Kristen, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, it's called Intuitive Decorating by Kristen Huber, <clears throat> and it's about how to realign your life vision with your living space. It's six person, we have four people here, but only three of us are actually staying. Um, here is the kitchen. You have this really nice fridge. Here is the fridge. Plenty of space. Got the freezer. <laughs> Got a mic um, microwave right here. So this is clearly the living room, living space area. Got a couch here, which apparently does pull out. Um, and you can watch some movies right here. Okay, so um, that's kind of an example of something, another opportunity out there being an influencer is um, that I was not hired to do. I just kind of voluntarily did that, but sometimes you have to voluntarily do things to get it on your portfolio, and then the companies will say, hey, I saw you did this. Could you do that for us? Um, and then you can actually um, charge for that because you're basically like a walking newspaper for people. Um, and usually Metro Parks, when they make posts, normally their photo or like maybe they just have writing on it. But this is like an interactive video where people can actually see the space before they book. And, and once they watch this video, they're probably going to want to book it. So um, that's kind of cool. Um, I also did um, BB Bop in Perrysburg. Anyone been there? Yeah. Um, I was there. I got invited there um, just before they opened. And they invited a bunch of photographers, videographers there to take photos, and we got free food and stuff. It was awesome. Um, so it's experiences like that that are kind of fun. And then um, I'm sure you've heard of Glass City Metro Park. I swear Metro Parks didn't pay me to say this. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but we actually got, you see our hard hats down there. We actually got to go to walk around the Metro Parks area as they were building it. So no public was allowed, but we were actually allowed to go there. And they gave us a tour and told us like um, what was going to be there and stuff. So that was that was really cool. So let's see what we got next. Any questions? All right. Um, another thing I do is um, my wife works at the Wood County Museum. It's in Bowling Green. It's a history museum. And I do videos and photos for them. So they have, they hold events. Um, and uh, they also have some exhibits. I'm working on some exhibit videos. So when you walk in and you're looking at an exhibit, there will be a video playing that kind of talks about the exhibit. Because some people, I am a very visual learner. Um, and I also like to um, be like hands on and be able to touch things and, you know, physically feel things. Um, but some people, our readers. Some people like to go read all the boards. My wife goes through, always reads everything, um, but I prefer to be visual in here. So they've actually hired me to make exhibit videos um, so that people can watch it and learn that way. So um, I wonder if. So when you say they, they hire you, do they hire Toledo Aerial Media or um, you just kind of? This falls into your lap because you're you're there, and they see something. Somebody mm -hmm. says, "Hey, look what he did," and they're like, "Oh, that's kind of neat." Is that how it happens? Um, so, with my wife working there, it was a little bit easier. Um, but I could have easily like like taken a tour there and really liked the place and be like and be like, you know what? I would love to do some videos for you guys. Like, um, can we talk and then start that whole process? Um, so it was a little easier because my wife, she, she knew what I did and she wanted, she wanted videos for the museum to help market. Um, and actually it was really nice because in 2020 they rebranded. So they really needed to like, their marketing needed an umph. So video and photo is a great way to do that, especially the video part of it. So, 
<clears throat> so you said, you say to him, I'd really like to do some videos. Say, say those words again. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, you yeah, you, like you want to say it in like a professional way, so I don't know if I'll splurge that out correctly, but um, basically if you, if you like a certain organization or business, um, the, the small the business, the easier, and also small businesses, I worked a lot with nonprofits, which actually the museum is, um, but the larger the company, the more hoops you got to go through, and sometimes they even have their own people that do, like their own marketing department that do it. Um, but if it's a smaller business, they they can't really say no. Like they they need marketing, but it takes some time to like um, ex to um, what's the word to in like encourage them that like they need it. And it does help to have a portfolio to show the work, so they can decide whether or not they like your work. Um, <clears throat> but um, if you can show them some work, then that's very helpful. So. Um, this is some of my best work, and hopefully I'll be able to access some of these videos. Um, I know one of them is on Facebook, but we talked about behind the hook. Um, anyone remember Christmas weed years ago? Don't I, tell me you're behind that. Yep. Well, no, I'm not behind the actual movement, but <laughs> but I went there and I recorded it just voluntarily, and it's some of I, I think it's some of my best work, and yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that ended up on YouTube. I think that ended up on Vimeo. So I don't even know if I can play that. But um, but I did a video about that, and it, and it did pretty well. But like it was like one of my favorite videos I've done. And like normally you don't love your own work. So um, OK, so here's some um, marketing opportunities for you guys, showing what you can do in Toledo. Because we're not Hollywood. Right, a lot of people, a lot of, I can't tell you how many people when I was going through college or whatever said, I'm gonna go to New York, I'm gonna go to Chicago, I'm gonna go to California. And it's like, cool. Um, but some, there's just a part of me that loved Toledo and loved this area and wanted to help build it up too close to like those areas. Um, there are a lot of opportunities here. Um, these are all journal marketing agencies. So um, a lot of businesses like, I don't know, maybe the zoo or I can't, I should have put who they hired, to, who hired them to do stuff, although I don't exactly know. Um, but these are some different marketing agencies that do like graph design, web design, photo, video. Um, they actually hire us, a lot of them hire us to do drone work. Um, I think we've worked with actually all of these companies have hired us for drone work. Um, and then getting back to, I forget your name in the yellow there. So BCSN, if these are, those are TV stations. So BCSN is good for sports. Um, also, I forgot to mention ESPN. Like I have a friend that works for ESPN Cleveland. So once you work for BCSN, then you can, once you get comfortable there and you want to grow, then you, maybe you can go to um, ESPN Cleveland. Um, BCAN or BCAN, that's Buckeyes like, um, they just do like lifestyle stuff. They do all kinds of stuff that's not sports related. And then of course you have news and then you have PBS, which um, if you happen to go to Bowling Green um, for film school, I think they do have a program there. I don't know a whole lot about it, but they do have a pretty solid media course there. And um, actually my, my father-in-law, um, he did some work for yeah, WBGU, um, I think PBS, so. Um, and the way PBS works, they have a lot of different stations, but I think if they like what you do, like if you have a show on there or something that, that they like, I think they like send it down to like Columbus or something and then it can go nationally, so. Okay, so here's some like, um, getting back to the whole YouTuber status thing, um, here are some good examples of how people are making a living off YouTube and um, YouTube has changed a lot. In the beginning of the talk when I said that um, that I wanted to be a YouTuber, um, back then that was the time to do it because uh, now um, software is kind of controlling YouTube and like the content on there. So a lot of creators um, have slowed down because there's just so many filters and stuff and a lot of stuff is no longer acceptable. And it just, it's just harder to be a creative on YouTube these days. But um, I'm sure you've heard of Casey Neistat, most people have. 
um, he's a vlogger and he's he just records his everyday life or if he's meeting up with someone or whatever he records it and he's probably one of the most popular vloggers ever um, and honestly ASMR anyone know what that is yeah I, I love ASMR I, I have anxiety issues and it really helps me and it helps me focus and all that stuff um, so people will get on YouTube they'll make ASMR and they actually like do really well with it they get they'll get brands I know um FabFitFun sponsors a lot of stuff and they'll get sponsorships and talk about the sponsorships in the video that's product placement um, and they do really well on there um, and then um, Unbox Therapy um, he's really popular and also MKBHD they are really popular because they um, they review or unbox and review different products um, and that's a big market because stuff's expensive so I don't want to buy this computer if it's no good so I want to hear from people first of what they think and I want their unbiased opinion on it before I buy it so um, so they will uh, make a video on that and that's another thing to do and then in the middle there I'm actually friends with them so anyone know who's oh, yeah nice yeah anyone know who Sir Yad is yeah um, so I met him because he does, he's from Cleveland I believe <clears throat> and uh, my wife um, hired him to do something at the Wood County Museum and so that's where I met him and I have a lot of knowledge on video stuff so I was kind of helping him out but now we're just friends he, he came to our wedding um, actually it's been almost a year now since our reception so he, he came there and uh, we're friends so it's he does all kinds of, he does like challenges um, he re he recently went viral because he ate nothing but Costco hot dogs for a whole week and um, I just watched a video like the other day he was th he was shooting a half court passes and or half court shots and for everyone he missed he ate a, a clover of um, garlic so so and and he and he's making it like he's making himself a living off of doing that. Like it's. I, remember, I like to. Well, I don't like the round personally. I hate the round body. So like when he, uh, he said jump in freezing cold lake area. Oh yeah. Or he'll eat a hot dog every time they score. Yeah, and see we watch that stuff, and brands know we watch that. So, the modern day way of making money now is that um, ads will be put in the YouTube video, and you know when when we're clicking on those ads that's how these people make revenue so it's it's kind of another it's another like weird way of of making it in this industry all right so we kind of went over this a little bit in the beginning but um let's say when you finish this class you're like yes this is what i want to do um where do you go from here um this is this is something i think i i think i took the proper steps and I don't like to regret anything, but sometimes I think a little bit differently of how I could have done things. But um, <clears throat> so in the beginning, we talked about, you know, if we want to own our own business or if we want to work for someone else. So um, this is this section over here talks about um, owning your own business. Um, I grayed out going to film school because um, it's not and I hope this I meant to talk to you about this before. I'm hoping this doesn't. Um, conflict with any of your no, teaching okay safe, safe okay um, so um, film school if you, if you know you're gonna own your own business and you know do your own thing film school is not that needed um, YouTube is a great source there's a lot of um, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of full-time filmmaker that's a really good source um, that's a really good way to you know get schooling from home um, but honestly, watching YouTube videos just on your own, making videos, use your phone or camera or whatever, um, great way to learn. Um, instead, what I would suggest you do is learn as much as you can about, about business and finances. Uh, I know it's boring. I get it. I, I, I am not, I, I'm not actually going to talk much about that because I'm not very experienced with it. Um, but you definitely want to do some... Uh, learn as much as you can about managing a business and managing your finances because if you're going to own your own business you have to do all that or if someone else is going to do all the business stuff for you you have to know how to pay them and how to pay yourself too um, and then after that you know just 
make something, make videos, take pictures, just get something out there. Because so, that the more you do it, the more you learn and the more you get comfortable with it and the more your skills. You have a question? Uh, isn't it very rare that most people will make it as a social media influencer because it takes a lot of time just to even get a couple it, thousand views? It does, yes. Um, so so have to have a side job at that point is have money to sustain your equipment and your, just your life. Yeah, so it de everyone's different, and a lot of times you'll never really know like what like different creators you watch on TikTok or YouTube. You'll never really know like unless they talk about it, like what their life is like. Because yeah, a lot of people do it. I actually did it on the side for the most part. Um, then for about a year, right before COVID, of course, um, I did it full. I was just I worked from home and I made a living at home. Um, and then that's when these guys Twitter me to hired me and now I work for somebody else. But yes, um, it's if you want to do it yourself, it's not something you can probably just jump right into. You kind of have to have a side job to um, to fund it. But you really want to grow this on the side. And once this is doing pretty well, then you can maybe, you know, quit your job and take that on full. Um, so but yeah, I know. Um, the YouTube YouTube creatives kind of go in generations. Like, have you guys do, do you guys know who like Shay Carl is? You ever heard of him? So a lot of those guys are not really doing stuff anymore, for many reasons. I mean, you know, family and time. You know, being a YouTuber, it's it's like working two full time jobs really. But people they. They go with the grind for as long as they can, but I don't know how many YouTubers have said like that their mental health was taking a toll, and they're like, "We gotta, we're gonna do like one video a month or so." Um, and you know, social media is ever changing, so um, it's a really fun thing to get into. But it's good to know you really want to take the steps to educate yourself so that you can keep it going. Um, and I also want to, I haven't talked about networking yet. Um, networking is a, do anyone know what networking is? Okay. I'm sure they have talked about it plenty in this class, but um, getting back to the whole school thing, um, networking is huge. Basically what that means is you're going around, you're talking to people about what you're doing, you're going to events and stuff and you're talking about it and you will meet other people who are like you and you guys can share information. Right now, I'm sharing information with you guys right now, so this is a form of networking. So you're, you're going to take what I'm talking to you about, and then you're going to remember it, and you're going to take it into action, and that's going to help you. Um, but you want to you want to meet as many people as you can because if you meet someone who's like a head of some firm or something, and they remember having that interaction with you, like you you reach out back to them, that's going to get you places. Networking is very big, huge thing. But you network and you have a portfolio. Yes. Yes, um, and again, portfolios can be challenging to make, to build, so that's why, and it's very controversial, but I am, I am for doing things for free, but you have to kind of be smart with how you do it, but do it for free so you can make it and put it in a portfolio, and once you have a portfolio, then you can show that to a clients, and that's where you start making your money. Um, so over to, um, let's say you want to work for an agency or maybe Hollywood. Um, in this case, film school is going to be the way to go. Um, all these agencies have certain re certain requirements, and a lot of that's going to be like a, like a degree. So you're going to have to go to film school, and that will help you learn and also network, because all the people you go to film school with, you're going to want to make friends, and you're going to want to keep in contact with them. Um, and uh, you, don't really, you don't really have to know as much about business and finances because um, if you're working for an agency, they have someone already doing that. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and keep networking too. So I think that's the last slide. Oh, no. Um, so here are some resources. If you guys are really into this and you want to start making moves in the local industry, these are two really good resources um, to visit. Do you, got, you guys all have Facebook and Instagram, mainly Facebook? Okay. Um, what I want you to do is um, Toledo Creatives is um, our local community for um, all sorts of creatives. We have photographers, videographers, um, paint, painters, makeup artists, models, everything. 
that is a general hub where everyone gets on and um, can find resources. There have been so many people hired because they made posts on this page. Really good way to ask questions and just f get yourself in the industry. Bottom one is Film Toledo, and you, you, you may have heard about them a few months ago. Um, they're a, a nonprofit, and um, they are now recognized as, as Toledo's actual film commission. So if Tom Hanks comes back and makes a movie, he's going to look at Film Toledo to, um, uh, to get all that situated. So those are two really good um, things to do, uh, ways to connect with, with our local industry. Tom Hanks? Yep. Uh, Man Called Auto. That was yeah. a year or two ago, yeah. And uh, I think, and there, there's a lot of movies being made in Ohio. I, f I just read about one of them. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, there was one made years ago at Mud Hen Stadium. It's called like Home Run something. But um, it was actually filmed at Mud Hen Stadium. So um, it's this is a big area for it's it's a bigger area than most people think for for the industry. Have you seen the Daily Show episode from a long time ago where our mayor tried to attract Hollywood to Toledo? This is before film TOL mm -hmm. existed. He marched the Daily Show around, not knowing if Daily Show was a satirical news mm -hmm. thing, and he and he started pointing out all the buildings that Hollywood could blow up if they wanted to to make a a, a big Bruce Willis blockbuster movie. That's what he was saying. At mm -hmm. the time. 20 years ago um, and then it got on the Daily Show and all the thing was was just making fun of the ma our mayor oh geez um, but he was trying to turn Toledo into a Hollywood um, playground yeah yeah and it's and it's it grow <laughs> but it's growing though like more and more and more companies are or more and more movies are being made here and even in Michigan too Michigan's another big one um, I talked about Transformers earlier they filmed Transformers 4 a scene of it was filmed just up in Michigan. I actually tried to, to get on that set, but I failed. But it was really cool. What did, what did you mean you tried to? Um, well, I knew they were there was a certain like stretch of highway up there they were looking for. So I drove up there and I tried to get on, like a side street and just to see, I wanted to see Optimus Prime or whatever. But um, it it like rained a lot, so they delayed and delayed and delayed to film. But if you watch Transformers Four, there's a scene in there you'll see the highway in there and there's there's a barn back in the background that that's noticeable. So um, but yeah I, I'll now open up to questions. So anyone got any questions or anything? What's your what's your project you're working on today, tomorrow? Yeah, so actually later today, um, I I am gonna be in Woodville. Um, so we work with a company called Freedom Roofing. And they do roofing, windows and siding on houses. And um, we will be with them like all day. This week we've been with them a few hours every day. And I'll go and I'll film them like busting the windows out, taking the gutters off and all that. And, um, and uh, then they're gonna, you know, they're renovating this house for education for their employees, so. How did that, how did that relationship, this TAM? Yes, that's TAM, yep. So how did that come about? Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not always in the know with like the business side of what we do, but I think my boss knew some, my, my boss was connected with someone, with the marketing guy over there already. They like knew each other and they're like, hey, like we really, the, the freedom is growing. So um, they're like, hey, like we need, we need to upgrade our marketing. Like, can you guys do some videos? And they, they're, they're all about giving back at freedom. So. This last summer, they gave a, a veteran a roof, a new roof for free. So we went out there and we filmed that. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. So it, like I said, it, sometimes I'm on a farm filming so a farm can market themselves. Um, we do like real estate stuff. Um, there, if there's a construction project around town, we'll go there and we'll record that over the course of a year. So there's just all kinds of stuff that we can do. Someone over here have a question? Yes. So if you could like tell yourself, just say like if you were in our shoes right now, mm -hmm. what were some, what were like, what would be some things that you would tell yourself mentally so that you know in the future that you have this portfolio that you can build out and lay out for clients in the future? Yeah, so 
Uh, one, I, I think one big thing that is not a direct answer to the question, but it's something I want you to keep in mind is despite the fact that this is 2024, a lot of people don't recognize this field as a real job. Um, actually, so getting back to the museum thing, I'm doing an exhibit video and I was at this old lady's house shooting an interview with her and she's like, so what do you do for a living? And I was like, oh, I do this. And she's like, oh, you work for the news? I'm like, no. Like, part of me wanted to like say yes, just to like, but, um, but a lot of people don't. So what I'm getting at is like, if you really want to do this, you're going to notice that like your family, your friends, a lot of people you talk to that you want to do this, they're going to like look at you and you're going to be like, oh, you don't want to be like a doctor or like an engineer. Like, okay. Like there, so, but I'm telling you like, you're going to experience some of the most fun things you're, you know, it, I've, um, this past year alone, I was on a military base filming. Um, I, the tractor pulls are so much fun. It's, it's just a, f what's that? 180th. We got to get as close to the fighter jets as we can without being in them physically. So, um, but yeah, I would just like, just have confidence in yourself. Know that this is a real, a, a real job. It's a lot of work. It's a ton of work, but, um, and it's, I, I argue that this industry is one of the hardest working out there because we just deal with so much stuff like getting permission and, um, trying to convince clients that they need work when you know they need it and sometimes you have to go to lengths if they say no sometimes you know you got to be like okay well I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to make a little video with my phone and I'm going to show it to you and if you like it great you know if, if not then oh well but so just you know have confidence know that this is a fun thing you're getting into and that it's going to support you but it's going to be a lot of work so any other questions no. All right. Do you have anything? No, no. I, I could ask you lots of questions. Yeah. But I, I like the idea of create, um, create the portfolio. Yes. They could even begin doing that now. Yeah, definitely. Like, use your phone if you you know phones are really good. They're getting very. I see some of you like I, I bet I bet that's got a good camera on it right there. It looks like it does. Like use your phone. Um, you know, with TikTok and all that now. Um, it's more and more acceptable to use your phone than it ever has been. These are the cameras that I use. I didn't actually show these yet, but these are the cameras I use, Sony mirrorless. These things are like, this one I think is like $4,000. That's not even including the lens. They're, so they're expensive. Yeah, they're very expensive, but this is like what pros use, I guess. So start with your phone. Um, if your parents have a camera, use that. I think, I think though a lot of parents now, they just use phones. So, um, so you use your phone, just make something and get it out there, put it on social media. And, um, it's probably not gonna, nothing's probably gonna happen for a little bit, but just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And next thing you know, your next door neighbor, Hey, I saw what you did on Facebook or Instagram. Like that was really cool. And you're like, Oh, thank you. And you know, just it's, it's tough to get out there cause social media is a very, um, it's a very saturated Thing. Like everyone's doing something, everyone wants to be the next YouTuber or TikToker, but you got to do something to be different, or you just got to do something and get it out there. So, right. yeah, thank try you it. very much. Yeah, for being here. Absolutely. Um, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you, what you're doing here in the future. Yeah. Um, the next little <coughs> movie you'll be involved with. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I did um, a story with Living. I don't know if any of you heard of that. I, I did that back in like 2018, 2019. It was a, a low-budget film, but uh, it was, it was a, a drama, and it was also about like mental health. Um, but that's on Amazon Prime. If you actually look up a story with Living on Amazon Prime, you'll see it. Um, but that was like a feature film that I did. Um, and, a, and a lot of stuff. Yeah, we, well, yeah, because, well, so we did, um, I did a lot of videos with, with Pun Salon. Um, we did, like, the football commercials for the fall. We did Blue and Yellow. Um, that was before me, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Blue and Yellow was awesome. Yes. You guys seen that, right? The Blue and Yellow, uh, how about Square Pizza Day? Oh, yeah. Were you, were you 
Yeah, uh, I wasn't, but I think that was just before I got involved. But I know. I know we also there was one time when we actually had like a a friendly battle with what was it Northview, because we did square pizza day, they did grilled cheese day, and it, we did we had, we had like a battle with with Southview High School. That was that was a good time. Um, and yeah, we I'm trying to think of what else we did. Um, I did the um, paintball and skydiving documentary. Um, that was super fun. When uh, the students at World War II class, they went skydiving to learn about paratroopers. And then they went paintballing to learn about D-Day. And I made a film about it. That was super fun. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I, I encourage you guys to, you got a whole crew here. This is, I, most, most films I work on, it's just me or it's maybe uh, me and another person, but you guys have a lot here. So I encourage you guys to like come up with some fun video to do for the school. And WTMR is great. I, I did watch some episodes of that. that. That's really well done. So good job. But come up with some fun video to do for Whitmer. Get, you know, encourage parents to bring their kids here. Or like if something fun's going on, make a fun video about it. You guys have a whole crew here. So go at it. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat>so yeah like i said this is only my second talk i've ever done and i noticed that as i'm doing the talk um i'm kind of scanning the room and um trying to decide if students are enjoying it or and are invested in what i'm talking about or if they're kind of just like whatever and i kind of got a mix of reviews there but one really cool thing that really reassured me that um, i was doing my job right was the group of students who came up to me after the talk when the rest of the students went back to continue on with their work and they all asked me a lot of specific questions and um, it was amazing just to connect with them and to see the excitement on their faces and to know that I am doing something big to help them. That was super cool. Yeah, I really want to do more talks like this. I want to do workshops. I It's really a goal of mine to help the next generation of kids who are going to be our future of the media industry. I really want to help them and give them better direction even than I got.